What you see here is the cover of an upcoming indie comic book scheduled to be published next year by Image. And that name down there to the right is my own. It's there because I was paid to direct it. And many of you will be going right now, the fuck you're talking about? You can't direct a comic book. It's not a movie. Yes, you can. And in fact, if you make a comic without direction, you're only creating an incomprehensible mess. What I was given was the script that was supposed to turn into a comic, and my task wasn't simply to separate the dialogue and the actions in frames and call it a day. I had to first read the damn thing, fix a hundred scenes of complete bullshit, rearrange everything so it won't feel boring at times, and then give the new version back to the author to see what he can change. A few days later, rinse and repeat because it was still a mess for different reasons this time. I had to read and edit the script at least 20 times before we could even begin making the storyboard for the first issue, because it was that bad. The original version of the text was below the quality of an average light novel, because the writer wasn't talented at all, and I had to correct him on every single line of text, so the final product won't feel like something written by a mentally challenged drunk card. Just look at this paragraph I had to work with. Can you imagine this shit in comic book format if it was left the way it is? It's a wall of text written by what appears to be a talentless 12-year-old edgelord. And this is the final product. My job was to turn that awful wall of text into minimal talking and constant switches of camera angles with body language in every frame. Also, since it was impossible to include all the information used in various info dumps, I also had to spread out bits of them during action scenes or moments of relaxation, which wasn't easy since it took 20 rewrites. It was that bad. And if you think my job ended there, it didn't. Since then, I had to deal with the artist. She is a woman, by the way, and does a fantastic job for what is essentially an amateur production. That being said, she still needs to be constantly told what to change, since many things are off, even after the storyboards are done, and it's up to me to find them and fix them before the final print, such as this almost unseen continuity error, where the man holding the briefcase is the third in one frame and then magically becomes the second in the next frame. Also, the third guy seems to be going back inside the portal when he should be more visible in the next frame. Imagine something similar happening every few pages, and how time-consuming it is to watch carefully every single image again and again after every change, so nothing will look weird in the final product. And if you think my job ends there, it doesn't, because changes are done despite the storyboards being ready. Since many things don't work out in practice, or the writer changed his mind, or the artist thinks differently, guess whose job it is, so those talentless idiots won't ruin everything. The moment I turn my back, they do shit like adding edge porn bullcrap that creates unbearable tonal whiplashes. They just thought it would be cool to add creepy deaths for breaking the monotony without thinking of the consequences. I had to fix even that. So as you see, directing and writing are vital. Without a genius like me at the helm, the final product comes out as complete shit. I am being paid for all this mess, by the way, and it's hardly enough of the tremendous improvements I offer, but I do it nonetheless because I can and I care. Even if you don't buy the comic next year, just be aware of how directing and writing are the most vital aspects of a story, not the animation or the pretty colors. And that's something you will never understand for as long as you think Digibro is the best anime YouTuber.